back to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss how we can use Microsoft Azure Active Directory to use an you to use as an, an identity provider for Salesforce and using single sign-on federated version. How we can uh, use it to log in into the Salesforce. So let's start it. Uh, we would start with opening the portal of Azure. So I would log in the portal dot azure dot com. Now right now I already have an account, so it is re redirecting me to the process. But if you are new to the Azure, you will need to create a developer account, which is a free tier, and it might be possible that it would be asking you for the credit card information. Now the next step is uh you have to go on all the services and you can search for Active Directory. So now you can see uh, I have Azure Active Directory and uh, right now I already have a two Active Directory. One is the old one which is a default and I latestly created a new. So what I will do is I will switch my Active Directory and here you can see it is showing me the Active Directory URL. So I am going on this which is on microsoft.com so it will switch me on to this website and let's do it so uh, what we want to do is we want to use this active directory as an identity provider for Salesforce org and I have my Salesforce org already let me open my Salesforce org and I would suggest to enable the my domain uh, first so as you can see uh, my domain for Salesforce is already I have is Jitendra 20 and that's my developer org so here what I will do is uh, I'm already here and I would be going on Azure Active Directory I just click it here and in, I need to navigate to the enterprise applications then create a new application now Azure have a lot of application listed already. You can again create your own uh, application which you are developing or yeah, any other non-gallery application. Now I am searching for Salesforce. So if I enter Salesforce, as I can see I already have a Salesforce. I, ha I have Salesforce, Salesforce Sandbox. So what I will do is I will select the Salesforce and it is asking me to give the name and name I can give as Jitendra 20 Salesforce and I will say add so now as you can see on the top right corner this is showing me an application you can see the complete audit log of Microsoft Azure by clicking on this bell icon and it will show all the prog process and everything now once your application is created so now if you see the path here you can see that uh, I am in application in the Jitin 20 so I am in Jitin 20 application now so what I will do is I will go on single sign on section here and so now there are some options available Azure AD single sign on uh, SAML based password based and linked sign on I will go on and select SAML based sign on now I have to provide the sign on URL so what I will do is I will go here and I will provide I will copy my domain URL here I will paste it here same way I will paste it here now let's see what it shows so I don't need any advanced setting so relay state is like in which page you want your Salesforce to navigate after the single sign on I don't want to choose anything now it is saying that which attribute from Active Directory should be sent to the Salesforce. So I am saying, okay, let's do one thing. S select the user. Uh, I guess there is a user mail. Let's see. I don't want user principal. So we have user employee, user mail. So now in my case, my user email is jitendra.jhaid.outlook.com and you can have user mail, uh, you can have employee ID and all those information. So how the Active Directory will know that which user is here. So I will, I will come back to that point. Now the next step is uh, we have to download the certificate. 
because in order for salesforce to know that identity provider is can we trust on that identity provider or not salesforce needs to validate it using the certificate so this is the azure certificate i will simply download it and uh, if any problem is happening i'm saying okay send the notification email to this email address let's see what there are some advanced uh, certificate signing requests so we already have SHA 256 certificate so that's good uh, it's a signed SAML assertion so whatever the SAML assertion response Microsoft Azure would send to the Salesforce that would be signed with this certificate so everything is good we don't want to change anything here now what I and I already have downloaded the certificate here what I will do is I will simply save it So once we save, uh, what we can do is, uh, so now if you click here, it will show you the step by step guide that what exactly we need to do and we will just follow this guide. So I'm going on Salesforce developer edition. I'm going on setup and I'm searching for a single sign on settings. So here I am. The first step is to enable the single sign on. So I'm going here. I'm saying, okay, let's enable it. Then we have to create a new single sign on request. So I can say the sign on name as, okay, Azure Active Directory. And then I'm saying so issuer. So let's see what value do we have to enter in issuer. So all informations are here, like I said. And as you can see, let's see. So in the entity ID, uh, so what I will do in entity ID, I will just write this my domain name here. So and in issuer, so issuer is Microsoft Dynamics. And where is that one? Okay. So this is the basically URL. So this is entity ID of Active Directory and I will just paste it here. I will remove the space. Now it says entity provider login URL. So for the entity provider login URL, we have to copy this URL and we have to paste it here. And then what we will do is we'll go back here okay so next step basically is we have to choose the certificate which we just downloaded and this is the way Salesforce will know that this identity provider is legitimate or not so this is the certificate which is the Azure certificate now the one thing is the information like we configured uh, Azure Active Directory is going to return a email address now that email address we have to there are three ways to identify to match the basically user that which user in Active Directory is which user in Salesforce. So there are three options like uh, it might contain Salesforce username, no. What I'm saying is assertion contains the Federation ID from the user object. So what I will do is I will update my Federation ID in Salesforce to have an email address of Outlook. So let's save it. So this part is done. Now let's go on Azure and we just follow this and everything is good now we will close this so first we have to do the enable which users are eligible to use it so i'm saying okay so right now uh, i have uh, let's say so i already have this user which is my current logged in user so i'm saying okay let's select this user and then you have to select the role for this user and these are all the roles available i'm saying okay this user is actually the system administrator user and i am assigning it so now what it is saying is that one user is eligible to access everything this jitendra.jha outlook.com i will copy this email address now i will go on users record here and I have few users available here. This is the user of interest. I will add it this user and what I'm saying here is that this federation ID, so this federation ID can have anything that employee ID, employee number or anything. 
now in the setting of Azure we said that we need a user email so if you go on single sign on setting which we just did you see the user email. we said that as a user identifier we would be sending a user email we can send an employee ID as well that's up to us so I'm saying okay this is jitin.jahidoutlook.com so basically this is the field basically which informs and which is actually the link between the Microsoft Azure Active Directory user and the Salesforce user. So, where is the federation? So, this is the federation ID we have. Now, the next step for us to go in my domain setting, and here I have to say the login. So, I, I don't want to change any login policy. What I will do is I will say that user can log in by using Salesforce standard login page and Azure AD page as well and right frame url uh, i can say okay let's navigate let's ask them to navigate to my website which is jitendrajahar.com and let's save it now it's time to test whether this is working fine or not or there is any issue and let's see if everything is good here we have provided the sign in information identity information everything is good saml setting is here okay so what i will do now is i will log out from my salesforce now you can see the azure ad button appeared here and you can see right frame url has been updated by my actual website now what i will do is now this is the SP initiate so Salesforce is a service provider and Azure is the identity provider and once you click on that Azure AD Salesforce is going to the identity provider that hey do you know this user so I'm clicking here Azure AD it went to login.microsoft.dynamics and I'm logged in now right now it might be possible that so everything is successful but you might not be able to get the whole picture so what I will do is I will log out from here as well as I will log out from Azure so I am not logged into the Microsoft now and let's see so I am saying okay let's log in using Azure AD so now as you can see the URL Salesforce check the single sign on setting and then Salesforce identify oh this single sign on identity provider is the Microsoft Dyna Microsoft Azure so let's do one thing create a SAML assertion request and send it to the Azure AD now Azure AD got that request and thought that okay none of the user is logged in so let's validate that user let's authenticate that user so basically now I have to log into the Microsoft account and this is my email address and that's it everything is working as smooth as butter so thank you very much I hope uh, you learn something new in this video you learn how Salesforce can act as a service provider how Microsoft Azure Active Directory can act as an identity provider and how the single sign-on can be done and how the Federation ID can be done Federation ID can be set up a like in our case like I already mentioned the Federation ID is my email address but it can be uh, your employee ID as well it's all up to you which you configure in Microsoft uh, Azure AD the last part I want to show is this so so there is a concept of just-in-time provisioning in uh, Salesforce so whenever any user get created that user should automatically get created in the Salesforce as well so normally how it happens is a uh, identity provider gives the saml provisioning uh, parameter in the single sign on request saying that okay this user does not exist you have to create it now in salesforce there are two methods either you can use a standard salesforce git or you can have your own apex class which will handle which kind of the which kind of the user needs to be created what would be the profile and all those information now active directory or Azure works a little bit similar uh, to I say the identity connect which is a connect a product of Salesforce again so what I will do is uh, uh, let me go to Azure Active Directory here the first link and here you see that there is an option okay so first I will go in enterprise application there can be multiple application which your Active Directory is working as an identity provider 
right now it is working at, as identity provider only for Salesforce so it seems I am on uh, my different active directory so let's go back on my original active directory and go back on uh, what I say Azure active directory I will back drop at the top here then go on uh, enterprise applications go on Jitendra 20 that's what we just configured now there is a provisioning so instead of creating a user when user try to log in in Salesforce how Microsoft Azure works is whenever the user gets created in Active Directory it will create a user back into the Salesforce so this is still the user prov provisioning but not really a GIT user is not getting created because of SAML assertion or the part of single sign-on from Salesforce to Active Directory user is getting created instantly with this so almost same effect uh, you have to provide your uh, Salesforce username and password now one catch here is a security token if you have a login IP range enabled in the Salesforce security token of course would not be there so what I did is I divided my password into two so let's say my password is ABCD so what I did is I entered a B C here and then I entered D in the security token just to pass this validation because anyways we know that the final password is always password plus security token so effect is exactly same then you have to provide everything you have to test the connection and uh, mapping information would be appeared there and that's all whenever user gets created in active directory the user will get created in the Salesforce as well so thank you very much for watching this video if you think it's a helpful please give a thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you have any feedback you are most welcome thank you